If we've established that a defendant owed the plaintiff a duty of care and that they breached that duty of care and that that breach caused the harm, what we have established is that the defendant, uh, prima facie, is negligent for the harm caused to the plaintiff. However, that's not where the problem ends with negligence because now the defendant can aim to reduce or eliminate their liability. And they do this through defences. Just like if you're charged with assault, there are defences like self-defence and provocation. With negligence, the defences that we have are voluntary assumption of risk and contributory negligence are the two key ways we're going to deal uh, with defences. So let's look at the first one, voluntary assumption of risk. Imagine we've got a situation such as in Agar and Hyde where we have rugby union players who are severely injured through playing the game. The scrum collapse collapses and break their, and that breaks their neck. So they end up suing the head body, the International Rugby Union Board, and saying, well, look, you allowed scrums. Your rules then are allowed the harm. You owed us a duty of care to make sure that the game was safe. Um, you breach that duty by, by writing the rules the way that you did and having the rules written that way actually caused the harm for us. You know, does that lead to liability, even though we do have an argument that there is negligence involved on behalf of the Rugby Union Board? Well, the courts have come down and said that, well, really in this case, the players voluntarily assume the risk by playing it. Now, note that they assume the risk within the rules of the game. So it's not about a dirty behaviour or behaviour outside the rules, but they had voluntarily taken on that risk. And that's what voluntary assumption of risk is all about. If you can establish that the plaintiff is fully aware of the risk at the time of the harm when it's caused and that they've assumed that risk, then the defendant is relieved of all liability. You know, this is really important, right? It means that the defendant won't have to pay anything because the, because the plaintiff assumed the actual risk. Okay. Now, a little technical note here, and if it's a little confusing, you can skip over this bit. This is actually very hard to make out in reality. Why? Two reasons. First, you must know about the kind of risk, the exact kind of risk, the physical risk that is going to manifest itself. Now, in the case of a scrum collapsing on you, that's pretty obvious. But the second is you must have assumed the legal risk, which means you must have assumed that you didn't care that the other person breached their duty of care to you. In reality, that's quite hard to make out that second bit, but... Uh, we're just going to deal with it as though it's kind of understanding the risk, but it's all elements of the risk. Okay. So again, just for the real world, it is a hard defense to actually make out. If we can make it out though, if we can um, determine that the plaintiff or the person injured was fully aware of the risk at the time when the harm was caused and that they voluntarily assumed that risk, right? And that they said, we don't care if the defendant breached their duty, then the defendant is relieved of all liability. The Civil Liability Act Section 14 does something that has tried to clarify this area, and it deals with areas of obvious risk. Under Section 14, voluntary assumption of risk can be raised, and if the risk is an obvious one, then the plaintiff is taken to have been aware of the risk unless that they can show that they weren't aware of it. And an obvious risk is something that would have been obvious to a reasonable person. Now, what this is really saying is in terms of the physical risk, we no longer have to establish whether or not the person actually knew about the risk if it's obvious. If a reasonable person in the, in the position of the plaintiff would have been aware of the risk, it's assumed that they knew about it unless they can show that they didn't know about it. Although this defence isn't used much, it's important to understand it's there and, the, and it leads us into the second defence which is used probably more readily around contributory negligence in our next vodcast. <laughs>